Good morning. Welcome everyone to Mount Hermon. If uh, you're worshiping with us for the first time, welcome. If you are back, welcome. I'm back. Um, and uh, if you're worshiping with us online, welcome as well. Um, we have a couple announcements to start with. Children's Choir will be starting October 23rd, right after worship, in the Education Building in the Craft Music Room. All children are welcome, and they're starting off with Christmas carols, so you don't want to miss that. Um, other announcements from the congregation. All right. 6.30 tomorrow night. Yes. You guys are awesome. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Rebecca Boatwright. I was once Rebecca Swigert uh, long ago when I went here. Um, this is my home church. So I grew up here, born and raised, and I am so excited to be back worshiping with you all today. I am currently a candidate for ordained ministry in the ELCA, a candidate for word and sacrament. I have been approved by the South Carolina Synod, and now I am awaiting my first call. So thank you for letting me be here with you today to worship. Now let's prepare our hearts for worship with the prelude. Great is the Lord, he is holy and just, by his power we trust in his love. Great is the Lord, he is faithful and true. By his mercy he proves he is love. Great is the Lord and worthy of glory. Great is the Lord and worthy of praise. Great is the Lord. Now lift up your voice. Now lift up your voice. Great Thank you. 
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus loves the world. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess yes, that yes, sin yes, still yes, has a hold on us. We have we harmed have your good creation. creation. We, have we have failed to do justice, justice love kindness, kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, our sins are forgiven and we are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ, who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
us pray together. Almighty and most merciful God, your bountiful goodness fills all creation. Keep us safe from all that may hurt us, that whole and well in body and spirit, we may with grateful hearts accomplish all that you would have us do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. First reading today is from 2 Kings. Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man and in high favor with his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Aram. The man, though a mighty water, warrior, suffered from leprosy. Now the Arameans on their one of their raids had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my Lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I a God to give death or life that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Just look and see how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted at the entrance of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, Go, wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. So Naaman became angry and went away, saying, I thought that for me he would come, he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, and would wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not Abana and Farfar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned and went away in a rage. But his servants approached him and said, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said to you was, wash and be clean. So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like a fl the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. Then he returned to the man of God, he and all of his company. He came and stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We'll re read Psalm 111 responsibly. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great, Great are your works, O Lord, pondered by all who delight in them. Majesty and splendor mark your deeds, and your righteousness endures forever. You cause your wonders to be remembered. You are gracious and full of compassion. You give food to those who fear you, remembering forever your covenant. You have shown your people the power of your works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All of your prefaces are truth, are sure. They stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. You sent redemption to your people and commanded your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is your name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice this have a good understanding. God's praise endures forever. The 
second reading today is from 2 Timothy. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. That is my gospel, for which I suffer hardship, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, so that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is true. If we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind them of this and warn them before God that they are to avoid wrangling over words which does no good but only ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to them, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. I'd like to invite the children to come forward for the children's sermon. Hello. Come sit. Hey, Kara. Hey. Hello, guys. Hi. Oh, no. Do you want to come sit with us? Hello. So many friends. Good morning. How are you guys doing today? Good. Good. Okay, I have a question. Has anybody ever heard the word gratitude? Have you guys ever heard it? Yeah, you've heard it? it. You heard it? Do you know what it means? God God does love us. That's a really good answer. (laughs) Yes. And that we are grateful for, Ara. Um, Yes. Yes, God loves us. Gratitude means that we are thankful. Have you guys ever said thank you for something? What are some things that you said thank you for? What are you thankful for? Candy. Candy. Yeah, same. (laughs) Yes. And are you thankful for that candy? Do you say thanks? You are. You're gonna say trick or treat. Are you gonna say thank you though? (laughs) What about you guys? I know. What are you guys thankful for? Yeah. All right. Are there any people that you guys are thankful for? Your mom. Are you guys thankful? Yes, your mommy is Cassie. Are you thankful for her? Yeah. Are you guys thankful for them? 
Well, God teaches us to be grateful, and that means to be thankful and to say thank you. I have here, I have some little cards. Does anybody know what this might say? I'm losing my mind. They say thank you. So I'm going to give you guys these, and then I'm going to give you a couple of crayons. And I want you to color it, and I want you to give it to somebody that you are thankful for, okay? We'll pass these out first, and then we'll get some crayons. Can you pass these down for me? Do you want one? There you go. Do you guys want some? Here, I'll bring them to you. There we go. There you go. <laughs> All right, now I've got some crayons. So, ooh. Let's see. We'll give out some crayons. We're just going to take a couple. You want a couple crayons? There you go. A couple crayons. Anybody want these colors? All right. How about these? A couple crayons for everybody. So color these and give them to somebody that you are thankful for. And then we're going to say a prayer together. Here, I'll get you a couple more. <coughs> All right. Do you guys want to pray with me? Yeah, you can take extras, actually. I have more of them. Oh, that's cool. Anybody else want an extra one to color? Do you guys want a second one? There you go. Oh, you guys are such good colors. Look at there. All right. Will you guys pray with me? All right. Repeat after me. Hey, God. Thank you so much for loving us and for candy. And help us to be grateful. Amen. All right, you guys, you can take those back to your seats and color them whenever you are ready. Thank you for coming up here. Please join me in prayer. Holy God, you have a word for me today. Make my heart soft and plant your word in me in order that it may bear fruit in your kingdom. Amen. Good morning again. Grace and peace and mercy are yours always from God who is love. Our gospel today is a story of restoration and healing and gratitude. The passage is centered around gratitude, and I think that it's fitting that I stand before you all today in this place, in the midst of this congregation that I personally have so much gratitude for. Um, I'm going to start with this one real fast. <laughs> So in today's story, we hear about ten lepers who Jesus has cleansed. One leper comes back to say thank you. And so I want to start by sharing my gratitude with you all today. For the love and life of Christ, for this congregation, for the things that are found in our passage today, and for so much more. We're going to come full circle but I do want to start with my gratitude for this congregation because my beginning here is the reason that I stand before you today as a candidate of word and sacrament ministry. And in fact, speaking of gratitude, I'm standing here and I'm looking at those stairs right there where we just did the children's sermon, and I'm remembering the countless children's sermons that I went to and how my parents, mostly Allison, always made me say thank you for the children's sermon to whomever happened to be doing the children's sermon that day, which sometimes meant going back up after I had already started my way back to my seat. I was like the 10th leper going back to say thank you, except it wasn't actually my choice, and I had to do it even if I wasn't actually particularly grateful for that children's sermon. Embarrassing, right? <laughs> No, but in all reality, I was learning the importance of gratitude at a very early age. And I'm thinking about now 
the countless opportunities that this congregation has given me. My first trip to camp, which led to my time on camp staff, which is a lot of the reason that I stand here today. My trip to New Orleans for the National Youth Gathering and really every moment spent with our tight-knit youth group. For Pastor Eric Friedrichs, who told me when I was in the eighth grade that I would be a pastor one day, to which I promptly responded, yeah, right. <laughs> but the joke's on me because God's plans always seem to catch me by surprise. And so I think it's fitting that my first time standing before you all here in the place that shaped me from my beginning, the place where I was baptized and confirmed and married and loved into who I am today, the passage centers around gratitude. The first thing I am grateful for in this passage is one of the things that I love most about Jesus' stories of healing, especially in the Gospel of Luke. It's that they encompass a pattern of true restoration and reversal because there's so much more at stake in these encounters than physical healing. The wholeness that people are offered is way more than physical. And this is certainly true of all 10 of the lepers that Jesus heals in today's story. You see, being a leper in Jesus' time meant being what some might consider untouchable. It didn't just mean that you dealt with a painful skin condition. It also meant social isolation, being seen as less than dirty, unclean, Isolation from one's own family, even. Most people would not have even considered a conversation with someone who suffered from leprosy. And yet Jesus, as Jesus often does, breaks down man-made barriers and standards and does the healing thing. And this healing, it doesn't just mean that the man's skin doesn't hurt anymore. It means so much more. It means reintegration into society connection with other humans that we all crave, a place at the table. Now I imagine those who found themselves witnessing this encounter might have thought something along the lines of, hold up Jesus, they're not part of us, they're lepers, they're really unclean, Jesus wait, that guy's definitely a Samaritan. But the truth is that those man-made lines and exclusions probably meant nothing to Jesus in fact, if anything, it probably helped. Jesus was always drawn to those on the margins of society. I spent the year after I graduated college living in Hungary, and I went as a volunteer through the ELCA's Young Adults in Global Mission program. And one of my main volunteer tasks was to work with the Evangelicus Roma Sacolegium, or the Roma College program. The Roma are the largest minority in Central Europe, and they face discrimination in a tremendous way on a daily basis, from systemic racism to flat-out hatred. And not only do most Hungarian Roma live in villages that are a visible drastic change from those of most ethnic Hungarians, there's also a clear difference in the education levels of Roma and non-Roma. Systemically, the educational disadvantage of Roma in Hungary is huge. In fact, in 2020, just two years ago, the Hungarian Supreme Court ruled that Roma children in the town of Gyungyushvata had been subjected to illegal segregation. In their school, ethnic Roma were taught on the ground floor and non-Roma taught on the first floor. And because of things like this and many other factors that play a part here, the majority of Roma children do not even finish secondary education. In 2016, less than 1% completed higher education. And so the program that I worked with provided financial, educational, economic, spiritual support to young Roma students who desired to get college degrees, even though the system worked actively against them. And although I was the outsider who could barely speak Hungarian, the students of the Roma College welcomed me in immediately. I quickly became very close to a young woman named Vonda, who told me about her first semester as a college student at the university. She hadn't yet found her place. She didn't even know that the Roma College program existed. She felt isolated and outcast, 
And these feelings were further enforced by notes that would get passed to her in class on a weekly basis. Things like, go home, dirty gypsy, and you don't belong here, were just two of the many notes that she received. And while you might think, oh, that is wild, I'm so glad, I'm grateful that we don't have that kind of racism here in America anymore, the truth is that there is still racism. There's isolation, there's division, there are people who find themselves on the margins every day, feeling like outcasts and outsiders. And sadly, modern Christianity is a main source of that exclusion and those feelings of not belonging for many. Sadly, there are still lines that we ourselves, humans, Christians even, have drawn that separate and exclude and isolate, but I am forever grateful that Jesus does not play by our lines. And so this brings me to the significance of the story's setting, the region between Samaria and Galilee. And it seems to me as though our society has hardwired us to want clear lines. And maybe it's human nature, the binary. We want the us and them, the right and wrong, black and white. This is okay, this is not okay. These people are good, these people are not. And yet I think that there's a reason that Luke specifically places this healing story in the unclear boundary between these two very different places. In this gray area that has no particular label or claim, because that is where Jesus' healing and restoration live, in the in-between, in the places where we meet those who are different from us, the places where we learn to love and cherish and contribute to the restoration of our fellow humankind, regardless of the lines that we have found or created. I'm grateful for a God who doesn't live in the black or the white or even in the gray. I'm grateful for a God who transcends our own ideas of who God should be and who God is. I am grateful for a God who keeps us on our toes and continues to be a holy mystery. I'm grateful for a God who reaches across our man-made lines and boundaries and offers restoration, renewal, healing. Which brings me back to gratitude. There's something very significant about the fact that one leper comes back to thank Jesus. And in his process of true reversal and restoration and reintroduction into society, this man has found something so precious that adds an entire new level of joy. And that is his gratitude. He comes back and he thanks Jesus. And I'm sure that Jesus thinks that's awesome and all. But Jesus doesn't really need this guy's gratitude. But you know who does? This guy. Because as a Jesuit priest whose name I do not no says it's not joy that makes us grateful it's gratitude that makes us joyful one of the things i am most grateful for in my life is my time at lutheridge a camp where i spent most of my summers from 2012 to 2020 and i'll never forget an activity that i loved doing with my middle and high school campers we would create a gratitude journal and after an intimate evening worship with our cabin group and maybe one other we would make these journals where for the rest of the week we would seek out the things that we were most grateful for. And while I hope that this exercise was meaningful and helpful and life-changing for at least some of my campers, I know that it was for me because it's gratitude that makes us joyful. And the best part of all of this, the part that I am most grateful for, is that God is always present. God is present in the black and the white and the gray. God is present along the margins and in the places where God has even shifted the margins. God is certainly present in the places we find ourselves immensely grateful. But God is also present in the places that make us think, man, I need to pull out my gratitude journal today. God is ever present, ever breaking boundaries, ever expanding what we thought could even be possible, ever loving, and for that, I cannot help but be grateful. Amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all God's creation. Majestic God, we give you thanks for land and water, seed time and harvest. Break down boundaries we construct between ourselves and the rest of your creation. Bring renewal and restoration to places affected by pollution and deforestation. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Mighty God, we give you thanks for those in our community, nation, and world who work for justice and peace. Guide those who govern to act on behalf of those marginalized by race, ethnicity, or religion. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Merciful God, we give you thanks that you hear the cries of those in need. Restore to community those who are stigmatized by illness, feel rejected, or who live in isolation. Send healing to all who suffer, especially Patricia, Alberta, Nell, Becky, Tom, Cindy, Linda, Pastor Daryl Edwards, James, Jane, Jerry, Jean, Mary Frances, Jean, and those who we name in our hearts or out loud. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give you thanks for your faithful people who have gone before us to your glory. Renew our trust in your eternal promises of mercy, redemption, and new life. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O oh God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. I invite you to share that peace with one another.
Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. As we gather around this body and blood which was consecrated by Pastor Gina, we remember that we taste and see that the Lord is good. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ invites you to this table. Come, taste, and see. You may be seated.
We stand. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. We pray together. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you all with truth and peace, and may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Amen. We follow the light of Christ into the world. We are God's people on a mission. We have gathered. We have been fed. Now we go out to make a difference in the world. Amen. Amen.